This video is made with generous donations from amazing furries, just like you. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Make a Masterclass. In this lesson, I'll be talking to you about how to make sure your design is fursuit friendly. And yes, we're on the floor today because I've just gotten back from a photo, I'm exhausted, and I wanna sit on my lovely, comfortable giant dog bed that I have in my fur room. So enjoy the floor gang footage, I suppose. So maybe if you like it, I'll keep doing it from down here. Let me know what you think. Anyway, um, as always, this video will have a Patreon exclusive extra credit class that's available right now. And this week's we'll be covering how to make not so fursuit friendly designs that you make stand up to the test of time and as best as they can whilst also looking super impressive. So without further ado, let's get right on into it. Let's start by defining what something being fursuit friendly is for the sake of this video. I'm gonna define fursuit friendly as a design that most makers would reasonably be able to and or be willing to make to a good standard. So why would we want this for our first fursuit? because you are, by act of making a fursuit, a fursuit maker. And we wanna make sure you have the best chance of making something awesome. Or if you're even using this video to prepare for your first time commissioning a maker, you wanna have the best chance of getting a slot with the makers you want. Having a fursuit friendly design seriously exponentially increases that chance. So let's cover some things about what would make a design fursuit friendly? What are some things that we look for? The main factor that I think makes fursuit friendly designs fursuit friendly is distinct solid colors. We work mainly with single tone furs, as you can see back there, um, and multi-tone furs are super hard to find specific colors of. Having clear solid colored sections also means that it can be machine sewn for extra durability and longevity in the long run. Uh, saying that, make sure the sections are large, ish uh, now in terms of large i'd say pieces larger than your hand count but ideally we want large areas that are distinct from one another larger areas reduce the amount of seams that movement and wear will put stress on and sometimes when we do complex markings the stretch direction of the fabric won't be the same for each piece this can create strange tensions and that can reduce durability over time it's not something that's necessarily a deal breaker overall but it's really important to know about clear different colors. In saying that, make sure you don't have lots of colors that are really close to one another. There's only so many colors of fur that exist and no, dyeing fur isn't really a thing. I'll cover that in detail later on in the next section um, and in more like about materials and where to find furs that match your colors. So that'll be a later video. So when you pick your colors, think teal, light brown, rust, tan, not teal, greener teal, teal or green and greenish gray. It will make your life so much easier. Just trust me, trust me on that, please. Okay, now let's go into what isn't considered fursuit friendly. If I see some of these pop up in my like, hey Sky, would you like to make this cue? Or like, you know, expressions of interest list or whatever, I will tend to swipe over them because I usually just don't have the time nor I can't spare the RSI strength. So my apologies if you have, but I, I just need to pick things that won't actually kill me slash give me an irreversible injury. We don't want death, zero death. Let's start with the most well-known of what isn't fursuit friendly, detailed marking. Now, it's not to say that detailed markings can't be done. They absolutely can. I have done them in the past, but it really does compromise the durability. More seams to split. It's also a lot more expensive to commission as you got to pay your maker for the time and detailed markings can take days, days of hand sewing to complete. And let's just spare a moment to grieve for our poor fursuit makers' wrists with the RSI you'd give them with your sparkle dog designs. I can't imagine how swole elk dragon's wrists must be. Now let's just go into a bit more detail about these detailed markings, because rosettes like um, snow leopards, fine, that's fine. But we're gonna go into a little bit more detail. So here's some examples of detailed markings and why they're not so fursuit friendly. Lines, lines. Lines that run like down fingers and down toes create almost four times as many pattern pieces as a hand paws, as well as things like anything like tartan patterns or any like fine detailed lines. I'm talking like think really detailed detailed electricity with a million and two different branches running off it. These would almost be better hand wafted into furs with a needle felting tool than sewn, which would require so much more maintenance. 
We're also talking about things like text, so written words. Fur doesn't sit still, it's not stationary, it has piles. It's fluffy, the fur fibers do this. So if you want text written on your suit for whatever reason, it's not gonna really be clear all the time. It's not, it's just simple not. Um, tattoos, they can be done, they have started to be done with really detailed snipping and stuff, but things with lots of colors often will be done with a patch, like an embroidery patch, like you put on like a denim jacket or something. It's possible, but you're not gonna get the same length of fur and it's gonna look like it's got a little bit of a bald patch there. Super tiny, tiny any spots so yes I'm looking at myself I hate I need to do Sky's bodysuit but I my wrist cringes in sympathy for the 88 spots I put on her last time I'm gonna do it again but it, it hurts guys it hurts a lot um so super tiny tiny spots not great they come off a lot too so that's not great either um and outlines so if you have say a super big spot and then there's a super tiny really thin outline around the edges not great um, that thin outline is going to have a lot of tension put on it and they tend to fray quite a bit so those are also not great. Those are the things at least for me that I would look at and go oh gosh so keep those in mind but I'm sure there's a million or two other examples of complex markings that aren't fursuit friendly. Let's move on to gradients. The OG um, they are definitely achievable by airbrushing or dry brushing but the problem with that is is it washes off over time and you're gonna have to get it redone every now and again to keep it looking nice and paint on fur does affect the texture of it for sure crusty crusty it's not good super super long tails or other features of unmanageable scale now i'm not about giving my customers back problems from giant wings that require full body harnesses to support or tails so big you can't fit in the convention elevators whilst they look cool they're bulky and practical, and I couldn't even imagine cleaning the damn thing. Crazy detailed additions and accessories. Antlers, scale patches, hand feathers, head feathers with six colors. All of these makes me turn off a design, personally as a maker, just because the sheer amount of work for such a small part and how difficult they can be to achieve. Honestly, I'd much rather pump all that energy into the really cool complex markings that look nice than having like ginormous antlers that could kill a man. Long hairstyles. Long feminine hairstyles are honestly appealing to me as a design choice. Sky now has an old hairstyle with long hair, which I adore. However, in fursuits, this can be super challenging to create without using wigs. And uh, anyone who owns wigs will tell you that maintenance is a whole other story. And finally, an unrealistic expectation of durability and longevity. Okay, this one might be controversial, but please just hear me out. In my eight years of making fursuits, the only people I've had to have the fursuit friendly design conversations with will often have an expectation that I can make their crazy design and also have it last longer and have virtually no maintenance involved as a result of having those markings. However you cut it, more complex costumes will fall apart easier. It's just how it is. More things can go wrong, become damaged, fall apart, degrade over time. It can be mitigated, yes, but not prevented. If I do take on a less fursuit friendly design, I'll be very honest with my client that this will mean that it will be less durable in the long run. Make sure you're aware of this too. And if you do take on the challenge that you have realistic expectations about its durability and have that conversation with your customer too. So let's say you have a character that is your persona already. How can you change your design to lower the cost of your fursuit or make it more fursuit friendly? So first of all, let's simplify markings, reduce spot count and reduce stripe count. Um, Larger stripes, larger spots, and simplification of those can do wonders for the ease of build. Being able to machine sew versus hand sewing saves time and your purple wrist strength. Number two, remove any gradients. Just make them one to three colors instead of a gradient. Just make sure they're at least mostly different shades and even go browsing fur colors before you make that choice. Number three, make detailed horns, wings, and feathers simplified. Have crazy antlers? No, you don't. Just make them more simple. Less spikes, more chibi. Number five, I think. Five, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Opt for simpler hairstyles over long hairstyles. Just change long hairstyles to a hair tuft like this or something like bangs, something easy to make. But you can add a wig if you want. It's just, if you have if you have specialty in that, go nuts. I'm not gonna stop you. Power to you, in fact, but that's my recommendation anyway. And finally, check for fur colors and adjust accordingly to make sure you still like the design. You can go onto the main fur suppliers to see if you can find matches for your character's colors. Um, I'm gonna recommend Big Z and Hal Fabrics for a good idea of what's available for makers to use. Um, check you like how they look together and if you do, you're good.
Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Your homework for this week is to create your design for your fursuit. You can use free to use bases, you can use pencil and paper too, um, anything you like. Just keep everything in mind that I've mentioned. But Sky, I don't care about fursuit friendly designs. I just simply want to embody my sparkles on jeans. Well friends, join me on Patreon right now for a guide on how to maintain and build your not so fursuit friendly designs and with tips on how to increase the durability and longevity of those designs. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you next lesson. Bye now.